Hey guys, welcome into the 14. My name's Nick Cole, and we're in week three of the SEC football season, and we're breaking down every game from a betting perspective. Today, we're talking about the Stanford Cardinal playing the Vanderbilt Commodores at Vanderbilt Stadium on Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That game will be on ESPNU if you're checking it out on TV. And from a betting perspective, we've got a, this game open with Stanford as a nine-point favorite, and it has moved a decent amount as the week's gone on. Stanford's now a 12-and-a-half-point favorite over the home standing doors. And the uh, over-under is moved from 48-and-a-half up to 49-and-a-half. It's a crucial move there. Uh, bring in our betting expert, Christopher Smith. Christopher, what do you make of the early move on this uh, Nerd Bowl game? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the brilliant thing about betting is that you can have a clear rooting interest in Stanford Vanderbilt, maybe even more than Alabama, Florida, or Penn State Auburn, depending on which games you bet on. So before we get into the betting side of this game, why don't you give us Nick's news and notes and tell us the weather injuries and most importantly, what's going on around the Vanderbilt program right now? Sure. So let's start with the weather. Uh, should be reasonable temperatures in the evening in Nashville on Saturday night, mid to low 70s as the game moves on, we'll creep closer to the 60s. Uh, but we do have a little bit of a chance of a thunderstorm throughout the night. We've got a 40 to 50 percent chance of scattered storms. So you never know what you're going to get at Nashville weather. Nashvilleians know about this drill at this point, this time of year. Uh, but only 5 percent, or I'm sorry, only five miles per hour wind. So not, not really a big factor on this game, I don't think. Uh, injury side of things, Vandy is going to be without uh, starting tight end Ben Bresnahan for a second game. Clark Lee on Thursday declared him doubtful, which to me means he probably won't play. Uh, he missed week two against Colorado State, but the Doors found a way to win without it. That brings me to some of the things I wanted to talk about before we get into the betting angle on this. The, uh, you know, most of the SEC fans may have been asleep last Saturday night when this Vanderbilt Colorado State game kicked off in Fort Collins, Colorado. I believe it was a eight nine no nine p.m. local time kickoff uh, for Vanderbilt fans. So if if you East Coast SEC guys were already asleep, you may have missed that Vanderbilt out of the clouds came away with a 24-21 win, and they were down 14 to nothing early in that game. And if you remember uh, week one, they lost 23-3 to at home against ETSU and one of the most embarrassing outputs for a program that has had their share of them uh, in Clark Lee's debut here at Vanderbilt Stadium. And so you went into that game, you saw them fall behind 14 to nothing and thought, oh boy, here we go again. And then I, I'm going to be honest with you, I think it was a – a taunting penalty by the Colorado State tight end, uh, Trey McBride, over on the Vanderbilt sideline. He kind of threw a football in a guy's face. And the Vanderbilt bench that had been lifeless for most of that game and the entire first game kind of got a little fired up and scored before they went in half and then came back and dominated the second half of that game and, and won 24-21. So who knows what we're going to see in week three from this team. You have the, man, this is really embarrassing in week one. You have the, hey, we grew a spine and we beat Colorado State in week two and come behind fashion. So who knows? Meanwhile, while that was going on, Stanford was putting a beat down on USC and shook the whole foundation of the college football world for the next week because the fallout of that game, which was a, a 42 to 28 win, but really wasn't even that close. USC scored late to bring it within two touchdowns. It is Trojans coach Clay Helton got fired and every coach in that you could think of has been rumored to be packing their bags and heading for Los Angeles as a result of the Stanford win. So Stanford has to be laughing a little bit about that. They came out of a week one game against Kansas State. They lost 24 to seven. That people are going, man, David Shaw's team took a real step back. And then they just rolled right into Los Angeles and put a, put a beat down on Clay Helton's Trojans. And the last thing I would say about this game going into it, both of them one and one, is this was supposed to be the Derek Mason Bowl when it was scheduled. You know, Mason was Vanderbilt head coach up until this past season when he was fired after a winless. 2020 season uh, he was a longtime defensive coordinator under David Shaw at Stanford previous to coming to take this job at Vanderbilt and so they put this on the schedule with him in mind it was going to be a home and home I believe 
uh, where there's a Palo Alto trip in the future for, for the Commodores. But as it turns out, Mason didn't make it to it. So instead, we're going to dub this one the Nerd Bowl. And I say that just because David Shaw made some headlines this week for uh, trying to pick on Vanderbilt, which is one of the nation's top universities, saying they weren't quite high enough up in the uh, old academic rankings. They were, you know, Stanford's sixth, and I think Vanderbilt's 14th in the U.S. World Report rankings or whatever. And uh, he basically said that allows Stanford to attract the real true student athletes, the top tier of intellect uh, to them over Vanderbilt or Northwestern or somebody like that. And it allows them to recruit nationally, where he said that Vanderbilt is relegated to recruiting more regionally. So a little bit of spice into this game as well. We might need it as the, as the late kickoff again in week three for the SEC. But Christopher, from a betting perspective, I know Nerd Bowl doesn't mean much to you, but what are you seeing in this game that, that might matter to some betters? Man, I would love to just put a camera on uh, Ed Orgeron maybe after he's been to the bar and say, uh, Ed, what do you have to say if somebody talked trash about your academics at LSU <laughs> and see how much he thinks that has to do with, with football and uh, how, how much he would think about somebody trying to claim superiority in, in, uh, in the classroom uh, when, you, when you go out and try to face an SEC offensive line somewhere. But um, – you know, in this uh, miserable nerd bowl, as you've proclaimed it to be, uh, if you're a Vanderbilt fan, I do think there is an area that you can maybe take some hope in, and that's on defense against Stanford's running game. And you take away just a single 37-yard run by East Tennessee State, and on the season, uh, outside of that, Vanderbilt's given up 3.4 yards per carry. And, and that's, that's pretty good. Um, Stanford had one 87-yard busted run against USC, but otherwise they ran for 1.8 a carry, and they also ran for 1.8 a carry against Kansas State. So there's some hope if you don't give up that one long run that, you know, you could be pretty efficient defending against the run against Stanford. And David Shaw, I think, has sort of lost some of his luster in recent years, in my opinion, because – he refuses to change the offense from run on first down, run on second down, and then see what we have on third down. If we got to throw it, we got to throw it. And I think if Vanderbilt's able to have success on defense against the run, that could play into the hands of, of Andy in this game, uh, at least in terms of keeping it close. And it's interesting, too, because Stanford had four different players against USC that had a 20 yard or longer catch and they had another uh, receiver that had a 10 yard catch. And, you know, they also had a 27 and 29 yard passes against Kansas state, even though they only scored seven in that game. So the pass offense for Stanford continually, like it has been for years now is probably underused by Stanford and is probably actually a lot better than their run that you probably think about running, uh, throwing it a little bit more on first down but David Shaw is the head coach, so not going to do it. And, uh, you know, maybe if Vanderbilt can, can force third and long, it'll be in a, a decent situation. On the other side of the ball, USC is a uh, air raid offense, so you didn't see much of this from them, but Stanford's defense is actually vulnerable against the run, and I don't know if Vanderbilt's the team to, to exploit that. Well, we'll find out. But uh, Vanderbilt was actually outgained in yards per play, against Colorado State even they won and uh, Vanderbilt's turned the ball over four times in two games so their best hope is probably to uh, run the ball pretty well shorten the game don't turn it over and force Stanford into a lot of third and longs Nick what do you think about this game if you're having to bet on it um, gave you 100 bucks where do you put it how are you putting it down on this game okay so I'm, I'm going to give you my picks but first I do want to say to the Vanderbilt fans that I've come to know and love over the years I'm I'm lovingly, jokingly calling this the Nerd Bowl. I, you know, you guys, you guys love your football too, and uh, there's something to be said about being a, a smart cookie in life, right? So just joking around with that, but I would say from a betting perspective on this game for me, I'm wanting to stay with my real money far away from the line, okay? Or, I'm sorry, from the sides, because I, I really don't know what to expect from Vanderbilt anymore. I, I I covered them for a long time. I keep up with them really closely. 
And even I couldn't tell you what even sort of tone this team is going to come out and play with on Saturday night. So because of that, in a 12 and a half number, if you're making me pick for this game, I'm going to take Stanford and lay the 12 and a half. And Vanderbilt fans, that's out of respect to you. I took Colorado State last week, and it blew up in my face. Maybe it'll happen again for you this week. But the number, if you were asking me to put that $100 bill, Christopher, on something, I think I would put it on under 49 and a half. And I think that's simply just because these two teams, as you as you sort of laid out Stanford's problems running the ball, and Vandy has their own problems at running back and on the offensive line, protecting in the passing game and just creating holes to run through. I just don't know that there's going to be a whole lot of scoring in this game. And, and so if you give me the chance, if we get on the right side of that number where we can, they can score seven touchdowns and we can stay under. Um, I like that. So give me the under my, uh, 49 and a half. And again, I'm taking Stanford minus 12 and a half, but you could talk me in the other way, Christopher. Are you going to? I'm with you on the under 49 and a half. I, if I had to make a play on this game, that would also be the play that I made, but, I'm going to try to get another game for a second consecutive week um, up on you in our, our betting picks here and do better at predicting Vanderbilt than former Vanderbilt beat writer and Nashville resident and Nick. Now, you know, Stanford's coming off a huge win at USC and they host UCLA next week. So again, just like if you watch any of our other videos this week, a lot of weird, tough schedule spots for a lot of these favorites this week. And for Vanderbilt, you know, they should at least play with a little bit more jazz and confidence after they won away from home last week, even if they didn't play that great still. And this is one of the only games left on their schedule where they could be competitive in it. So I think we'll probably see at least some excitement and energy at home, and at least in the first half, and we'll see if they can keep it close. And, you know, if, if uh, Vanderbilt just prevents Stanford from, from, hitting a big play with a missed assignment on the run or on the pass. Uh, so this is not a Stanford offense that's efficient by any means. Don't let the 42 points against USC fool you. So let me take Vanderbilt plus 12 and a half. Um, this line has been inching up more and more and more. So if he could find a 13 uh, before the game, I, I would love that. But if I got a pick now, I'll go Vanderbilt 12 and a half under 49 and a half. But for Nick Cole, I'm Christopher Smith for the 14, and we will talk to you next week.